Okay, let's go through paper six, which is the alternative to the practical for chemistry. This is from IGCSC, from Cambridge International Examination, CIE, May, June, 2017, and the code is 0620 slash 62. All right, let's get started. Oh yeah, let's light this candle. <laughs> Question one. A student investigated the rate of reaction between an excess of dilute hydrochloric acid and magnesium ribbon. The apparatus is shown. So they put magnesium ribbon in acid and you get bubbles coming up through here being collected in this container here. All right, collected under water, so it just displaces the water out of the way. Two experiments were carried out. The temperature was the same in each case. A. Complete the boxes to identify the apparatus. All right, so the first box up here is, this is known as a measuring cylinder. You're just measuring it upside down to what you normally would. And this is a conical flask. All right. B. Give one observation expected during this reaction. Okay, so you react an acid with a metal and you will get bubbles of hydrogen gas. Okay, so you can say bubbles, fizzing, or a much nicer word I think is effervescence. Although bubbles and fizzing are also good answers. Saying a gas is produced is not an observation, it's something you know. An observation is something you see, smell, hear, don't taste it, you don't taste things in a chemistry lab, that sort of thing but it's not something you know. You know it's a gas, but you can see that there's bubbles. Okay, so graphs were drawn from the results of each experiment as shown. All right, so we have experiment one, experiment two, and the volume of gas on the y-axis. C, label the x-axis of the graph. All right, so th this is the volume of gas being collected over a certain amount of time. So the x-axis is time in seconds, and that's it. D1. Give the volumes of gas at which the two graphs level out and compare these values. All right. For experiment one, it levels out. Nice straight line. Looks like it's going about to the 80 centimeters cubed mark. And for experiment two, nice straight line. Looks like it's going to the 40 centimeters cubed mark. All right. So experiment one levels off at 80 centimeters cubed. Experiment two levels off at 40 centimeters cubed. You're asked to compare them. Well, clearly, 80 is double 40 and so that is all you need to do to compare them. So experiment one levels off at 80 centimeters cubed and experiment two is at 40 centimeters cubed. So experiment one is double the volume of experiment two. Okay. Two, suggest why the graphs level out at different volumes. Well that would be to do with the mass of the magnesium used. If they use the same amount of acid, they would have to use different masses of magnesium to get them to level out at different volumes. So you can say experiment one used twice the mass of, of magnesium. Okay, three. The graph has been drawn again. Draw the curve expected if experiment one were repeated using the same mass of magnesium powder instead of magnesium ribbon. So they use the powder instead of the ribbon. So powders, the reaction goes faster, but they ended up, they use the same mass, so it go to the same value. So you'd expect to have a curve drawn care carefully all the way straight along here. That's it. So it has to level off at the same, va same value, but it has to be steeper. It has to go faster initially than it did with just the, ri with the ribbon. So we can label this as Experiment one with powdered magnesium. All right, okay. Question two, a student investigated the reaction between aqueous potassium manganate seven, solution A, and two solutions of iron two sulfate, solution B and solution C of different concentrations. So we reacted potassium manganate 7 with iron 2 sulfate of different concentrations. All right, two experiments were carried out. Experiment 1, a burette was filled with solution A, which is a potassium manganate, 
to the 0.0 centimeters cubed mark. A measuring cylinder was used to pour 25 centimeters cubed of solution B into a conical flask. Solution A was added to the flask while the flask was swirled until the mixer just turned permanently pink. The burette reading was recorded. A. Use the burette diagram to record the reading in the table and complete the table. All right, so we know what the initial reading was. But that was 0, 0 0.0 centimeters cubed. But you don't write centimeters cubed in the table. You never write it in the cells because it's written over in the headings. It's always written in the headings. And reading this burette, you can see that there's, it just goes between 12 and 13. There's 10 gradations. So it's, each one is 0.1, but this is 13.0. If this one says here 0.0, .0 then this should have 13.0. It should always be decimal. And you can read to one decimal place anyway. And clearly the difference between 13.0 .0 and 0 is 13.0 .0 centimeters cubed. Experiment 2. Experiment 1 was repeated using 25 centimeters cubed of solution C instead of solution B. So just a different concentration of the iron 2 sulfate. In experiment two, the burette was not filled to the 0.0, .0 centimeters cubed mark. B. Use the burette diagrams to record the readings in the table and complete the table. Okay, so the, the initial reading here is 2.1 centimeters cubed. And that goes in this, the second line. Be careful because it's easy to put initial in the first box just because that's, that makes sense. Read what the headings are. Okay, and the final reading is 41.1. All right, so 41.1 minus 2.1, that is 39.0. All right, let's keep going. C, why is an indicator not added to the conical flask? Well, the reason why is because the reaction of potassium manganate and iron sulfate means that there will be a color change already at the endpoint. It already turns a permanent pink color at the endpoint. So the reaction already has a color change at the endpoint. D1. Which solution of iron 2 sulfate, solution B or solution C, is the more concentrated? And explain your answer. Okay, let's look at them. So, so solution B, it took 13.0 centimeters cubed. And solution C took 39 Point zero centimeters cubed. Make sure those decimal points are nice and clear. 39.0 centimeters cubed. So that means that solution C is more concentrated because it took more potassium manganate to react with it. So solution C as a greater volume of potassium manganate solution was needed. Two, how many times more concentrated is this solution of iron 2 sulfate? So as we said, solution C was 39.0 centimeters cubed, and solution B took 13.0 centimeters cubed. If we divide 39.0 divided by 13, that equals 3. All right, so that means that solution C is three times more con concentrated. So it's three times as concentrated. E1. If experiment 2 were repeated using 50 centimeters cubed of solution C, what volume of solution A would be needed? And explain your answer. Okay, because remember, it started off with 25 centimeters cubed. Okay, now you're changing it to 50 centimeters cubed. So, if you double the volume of the iron sulfate, you will need double the volume of the potassium manganate. It would be double the volume of solution C, so it would require double the volume of solution A. This is 78 centimeters cubed. You've explained it and you've given the value that it should be. Two, suggest a practical problem that using 50 centimeters cubed of solution C in this investigation would cause, and suggest a practical solution to this pro problem. Okay, so the problem is, is that most of the burettes you'll be using will probably go up to 50 centimeters cubed. And if this takes 78 centimeters cubed, you're going to have to fill it up more than once. So the volume of potassium manganate 7 added would be more than 50 centimeters cubed. So the practical solution, refill the burette when it gets empty. F. 
Give one advantage and one disadvantage of using a measuring cylinder instead of a 25 centimeters cubed pipette for solution B. Okay, measuring cylinders are much easier and faster to use than pipettes. So it's quicker to use. Okay, so it says one advantage, easier is one, faster is another. It only wants one of them though. So just write faster or quicker to use or easier to use. It's also okay. And the disadvantage is that the measuring cylinder, because the diameter of it is wider than the pipette, it's less accurate. So it's not as accurate. And G, how would the results be improved by taking repeated measurements? Well, whenever they say repeated, repeated measurements always have to do with reliability. Just like if a question asks, how can you make the investigation more reliable? The answer is always repeat and take the average. So it would make it more reliable because you can take the average. So this would make it more reliable as the average can be taken and you can spot anomalous values. That's why it makes it more reliable that if you have an anomalous value, you can discount it from the readings and take another reading and then it works. Okay, so that is actually three possible marks for one mark. So saying it makes it more reliable, that, that's good enough for repeating measurements. Question three. Two solids, E and F, which are both salts, were analyzed. Solid F was lithium chloride. Tests were carried out on each solid. Some of the tests and observations are shown. So the tests on solid E, which is our unknown salt. So we start off with test one. A flame test was carried out on solid E, and it was a yellow color. Well, yellow, that is for sodium. All right, so that's part of our answer, I'm sure. Test two, 10 centimeters cubed of distilled water were poured into a boiling tube. The initial temperature of the water was measured. Then solid E was added to the boiling tube and the boiling tube was shaken to dissolve solid E. The temperature of the solution was measured after one minute. A, use the thermometer diagrams in the table to record the temperatures and complete the table. All right, so let's just do it the initial and then final. So the initial temperature, it started at 20, 21, 22, 23, degrees Celsius. 23. Okay. And here the final temperature, it was 19 degrees Celsius. So the difference between 19 and 23, it doesn't need a plus or a minus. It is four degrees Celsius. But if you notice, the temperature has gone down. It went from 23 to 19. The solution was divided into two equal portions in two test tubes and the following tests were carried out. So then test three, dilute hydrochloric acid was added to the first portion of the solution. The gas given off was tested with filter paper and dipped into acidified aqueous potassium manganate seven. The filter paper turned from purple, which is the color of aqueous potassium manganate seven, to colorless. And this is the result when you add dilute hydrochloric acid, and that's the result. It is for sulfites the sulfite. Okay, so test four, an excess of aqueous sodium hydroxide was added to the second portion of the solution and there was no change. All right, so it looks like the result is going to be sodium sulfite. B, what does the temperature change tell you about the process occurring in test two? Okay, the temperature change, it went down four degrees, which means it's an endothermic reaction. Okay, C, name the gas given off in test three. Well, the gas itself is sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is the gas that's given off when a sulfate reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid and it turns, uh, it turns uh, potassium manganate seven from purple to colorless. Okay, D, identify solid E. So we, as we said, it was sodium sulfite and this is so that's Na2SO3 all right but you you can just write sodium sulfite tests on solid F okay so solid F remember as it said at the beginning of the question this is lithium chloride 
Okay, so complete the expected observations. A flame test was carried out on solid F. So the flame test for lithium is it turns red. It's a nice pretty red. Solid F was added to distilled water in a test tube and the test tube was shaken to, dis to dissolve solid F. So it makes solution F. Dilute nitric acid and aqueous silver nitrate were added to the solution. Okay, so that is the test for chlor chloride ions give you a white precipitate. A bromide ion gives you a cream precipitate. And an iodide ion gives you a yellow precipitate. So this is lithium chloride. It will be a white precipitate. There we go. Question, let's move on to question four. Question four. Calcium carbonate and kaolinite are both white solids found in sedimentary rock. Calcium carbonate reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid to form aqueous calcium chloride. Kaolinite does not react with dilute acids. You are provided with a mixture of calcium carbonate and kaolinite and, and access to dilute hydrochloric acid. Plan an experiment to determine the percentage by mass of calcium carbonate in the mixture. Okay, so you have a mixture of both of them. You want to figure out how much of it is calcium carbonate. So there are two different ways you could do this. You could either basically react the mixture with lots of acid and just wash the residue left behind and weigh what's left behind and find the difference. That's probably the easiest one. And the, uh, the other one you can do is react it with acid and collect the gas and figure out the volume of the gas. Okay, so I'm going to describe the, the fil filtration method. Okay, so you start off, you need to weigh how much of the mixture you have. So weigh the mixture of calcium carbonate and kaolinite. Then you add dilute hydrochloric acid to the mixture. So continue adding the acid until there is no more fizzing. So you basically want to add the acid in excess. Once it's continued reacting, you filter it. Now you filter the mixture. So then you wash the residue and you dry it. You want to only be measuring the kaolinite, not the, not, and it, not the acid that's left on it. So you want to weigh the residue. So the percentage by mass of calcium carbonate is a change in mass divided by the initial mass times 100. And remember, it says, so plan an investigation to determine the percentage mass by mass of calcium carbonate in the mixture. So that's what you want to end off with. So when you're answering these questions, make, go back and read to make sure you have answered what they're actually asking. So don't just say reweigh it. You have to actually say how you calculate this, because that's what they want to know. All right, and that is everything for this question. And that is everything for this exam. So if you've liked this video, please press the thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed already, we'd really appreciate it. We also love to hear your comments in the discussion section below and have a great day.